welcome to episode of Jay Lono's Garage. Today we're talking about motorcycles, specifically Arch Motorcycles, an American motorcycle brand that we previewed on our Jay Lono's Garage on CNBC, oh, about a year and a half ago. And since that time, the company's really taken off, selling a lot of bikes. The two co-founders are here, Keanu Reeves and uh, Gard Hollinger. Come on in, you guys. Good to see you. Good afternoon. Good to see you Jake. finally having a little bit of success. Yeah, yeah oh, that's, that's terrific. Nice to see you. Nice work, Let's squeeze gentlemen. In here. Nice work. Uh, I don't think people understand just how hard it is to start. It's hard enough to start a regular company, to start a motor a vehicle manufacturing company. It's just, uh, just unbelievable, isn't it? Were you, were you amazed at all the things that got thrown in your way? Oh, it's easy. Anybody could do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I yeah. mean, federal regulations, state regulations. I mean, that's just on top of whatever you start with in terms right. of engineering and what your goal is, right? So, and then when you start to think about selling internationally, right. you just pile some more stuff on right. there. Now, European bikes have a whole different set of regulations, don't they? This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Which we are learning about. Right. Now, Keanu's been a biker since... Well, I remember you used to drive your Norton when you were a guest on The Tonight Show. With yes, me I did. 20 years ago. You were yeah. at your sister's place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you still have that Norton. I do indeed, so sir. never sell anything. <laughs> no, you. That's, no. So, was this your idea? Did you approach him? Hey, I'd like to start a motorcycle company or with the um, other way around? How did it happen? No, no, it, it was. I did approach Guard about doing it. Uh, he had built a uh, uh, custom motorcycle. We had worked on building a custom motorcycle, which was about basically a, a cruiser that you could ride. And um, that was this bike. Right. And that took about four or five years. And once I rode this machine, it was a miracle. I'd never ridden anything like it. Yeah. And so I was looking at it, and I went to guard, and I was like, you like that motorcycle. I, I said, love that yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Why don't we start a motorcycle business? And I said, no, that's a horrible idea. He said, no, it's a horrible <laughs> yeah. idea. But... Eventually, I persuaded him yes. after some, you took some deep reflection, and, um, and then so we started Arch Motorcycle right. Company, and from that machine to that machine, yeah. basically took three years. Well, it's basically a cruise that it handles like a sports bike, fair to say? Ish. Not yeah. a sports bike, but I mean, I think something that... Sportier. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, a cruiser that you can lean over, that you can right. go into turns, and, but also have the pleasure of all of that torque. Yeah, yeah. You know? Now, this one used a Harley engine, so you, you built around this, but now you've gone your own way. With, is it based on an S&S motor that we have? Correct. Here? So it's based on S&S's uh, 124 cubic inch twin cam. Right. Um, it has a unique downdraft system, which they developed with us. Uh, it's closed loop fuel injected. Some of the uh, visual stuff, you know, the, the cam covers are designed. And then, of course, the complete engine package we sort of built off of their engine, so transmission. The oiling system is unique. It's more like an automotive oiling system. Right. It doesn't have a rubber oil line. It's a direct pickup from the bottom of the oil pan. Um, it's also shares a transmission mount as part of that oiling system. And it's a uniquely American motorcycle, American-looking motorcycle. Yeah, for Even sure. Even people don't know anything about motorcycles, that looks like an American bike. I mean, when you go to Europe, a lot of the motorcycles are one liter, maybe a little bit less, because they have tax regulations based on how big the engine is. Luckily, we don't have that here, so we can have big, torquey motors uh, that make all kinds of low-end power, which is what American motorcycles are about, whether you're talking Harley or Indian or Arch or anybody else. We, we like that, that, that low end torque. Yeah, low RPM, lots of torque in the bottom end. What kind of torque are you getting with these motors? So in our production trim, we're a little over 100 foot pounds of torque. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess. Now, the nice thing is they're all 50 state compliant, right? Correct. Now, if you watch this website, you know we have always have people on. <clears throat> we're waiting for certification. We should have it any day now. <laughs> and of course, most of the time, it doesn't come through. It's just expensive, and it's time-consuming. And so I, I give you guys credit for the ability to, to take it this far. Because last year, when we, we visited the shop, and they had a few bikes. But now you've got orders coming in, and you're selling bikes. And yeah. it's, it's exciting. Is it, is it fun yeah, to right. be in the motorcycle business? Or is it like, you know, sometimes you make your hobby your, <laughs> your business. It's like, uh, and you're like, what have I done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it's been actually one of the... the uh, the great pleasures of it is to to see one of your customers riding your bike right you know and to see the grin on their face and 
to hear them communicate the pleasure that they have with riding the bike, you know, you're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really is a great pleasure to. And to it's have fun that to experience. have them go. I don't care about the movie thing. I like your motorcycle. Yeah, it, I mean, it, I mean, yeah. that's, but I mean, I mean, you've been a movie star for a long time, so that you got that one down. Now you move into something else like this. It is. It's very unique and really yeah. special. I'm grateful yeah. to Guard for, you know, his talent and and his attention to detail and obsessiveness and you know just everything about that motorcycle is just thought out um, and the execution of it you know we're, well we're, just this tank I can look at it I mean beautiful weld here what goes into the making of this tank just tell me about that so the body work on our bikes a little unique because it's all made from billet aluminum right. so rather than being formed you know hydroformed or deep draw stamped we start with a huge piece of aluminum and machine away all the excess. Okay. So that... Well, how big a piece of billet So is one side starts at about 240 pounds, and we okay. end up with about a four pound, three, four pound shell. Okay. It's welded to a backing plate. The right side actually happens to be a structural member that completes the chassis. The left side just drops on and holds fuel. Um, you know, range was important. I mean, these are all things that sort of we talked about in the development of what the bike should do. So I didn't want to get on a motorcycle, have one of those little tanks, and you're like, go 120 miles, and you're like, okay, I got it. You know, I wanted yeah. to be able to keep to going. Go. Right, you know? right. So what is this, about a four gallon? Five gallon. Oh, five, yeah. okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, these are not inexpensive motorcycles, but if you watch his website, we do Pagani, we do Bugatti. I mean, this is the equivalent of that in a two-wheel form. I mean, uh, a Pagani is, what, $2.4 million because it's all handmade. Uh, these are, what, about $80,000 approximately, something like that. Is that a lot of money for a motorcycle? Yeah, but you're getting something that's made especially. For, and you can go down and discuss with you what you want on your bike and how you want it. I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing's cheap anymore. I mean, you know, there are Ducatis that run close to $100,000. So this you're getting, you know, you're getting one guy's vision of what the bike should be combined with what you want to see in it. And I think that's pretty exciting. And they are extremely well made. I've ridden them. They're wonderful to ride. They're tremendous fun. Can you justify that price? Yeah, if that's what you want. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people can't get beyond that. They think, oh, you're making uh, seventy-nine thousand dollars a bike. Well, we get yeah. a lot of people ask if we could like make a cheaper one, but yeah, it wouldn't be yeah. the same thing. And there's lots of companies that do that really well. Yeah, and you don't get rich doing this. No, no, just the <laughs> no. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, you got to keep <laughs> making movies to do. This. Yeah, like I got to keep telling jokes to do the website. I mean, but you do it because it's a labor of love, and eventually, eventually. You, you turn a profit when, when th things really start rolling. But things are rolling now. You guys are doing quite good, aren't you? Yeah, we are. And I, you know, we, I think we've really tried to keep our focus on the brand and not get distracted with, right. you know, we're not a t-shirt company or right. an apparel company. And, and so doing the right thing with yeah. the motorcycles we make is really And you're important. not doing theme bikes. You're not building a bike that looks like a a mailbox for the post office, so when the no, looks theme like a bike, there's anything anywhere. wrong with that. He'll yeah. always he'll always stick up for him. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, we make a production custom motorcycle. Right. You know, and so you're getting all of the benefits of a production motorcycle. Right. It took three years to make it work. Right. And make it work exceptionally. There's no other motorcycle that rides like an Archer motorcycle. Good. And at the other hand, like you were speaking about, it's personalized. Right. No one's going to have your machine. Right. So I think to be able to deliver that kind of performance, you know, high-end fit and finish, and it's your motorcycle. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of the, um, you know, if that's an exceptional kind of situation. And um, obviously, it comes at a price. And, um, you know, if we could do that for, you know, less money, we would. Yeah, we and can. man hours, you're probably talking 10 bucks an hour. You know, we figured out just if we built <laughs> right. one bike at a time, yeah that it would take four months. Obviously, right. we have to get ahead of the game by producing sure. parts in larger quantities right, and warehousing right. them. But, you know, it, we're also pretty proud of the fact that we're building a vehicle. We designed and we're building a vehicle not only in the U.S., but in California, right? And it's 50-state <coughs> compliant. Exactly. I mean, that's the real yeah. trick, making your vehicle comply to all the rules and the regulations, be they smog, be they safety, whatever, crashed, whatever, just all the stuff. I mean, that's why... It's a tremendous credit to these guys that the company's doing as well as, as it is. Now, the name Arch, where does that come from? 
Uh, we were playing the name game when we started the company, yeah. and uh, I wanted to call it Hollinger. And I said no. And he wanted to call <laughs> the it... The Reeves. But, no, you didn't. But, <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. So, um, you know, part of the thing that, you know, Guard brings to it is that everything has to have a story. And it's not only that it has to have a story, and in, in, in a way he translates that to the manufacturing and to the, to the machines and parts that he designs and builds. Like, it's form and function. Right? It's the aesthetic of it. Right. And he, he translates that to everything. And so even to a name, it had to have a story. And I was riding to his house to continue the name game. And I was going through and I was thinking of words and things. And I, for whatever reason, um, came up with Arch. And I was like, so, what do you think, Hollinger? What about Arch? Because an Arch is strong. And he's like, yeah, what's the story? Yeah, I said, well, okay, well, that doesn't suck, but why? Well, that and doesn't suck, but yeah. why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so obviously, yes, the arch. It's a beautiful aesthetic, you know, the radius, the curve. We see it all of the time. It's functional, um, bridges, doorways, wow. structural. And, and also that, 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 con that structural element connects, right? That bridge, it, it connects two places. Um, it's a part of journey. Um, it's you and I, and you know, so that, that kind of passed muster, and, and we liked how it sounded. You know, the analogy, and I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but when I was doing the Tonight Show, these tailors would come by, go, try this suit on, and I put the suit on, and it would fit unbelievable. And I'd say, well, this is a great suit, how much is it? 15,000, 15,000 <laughs> for a, but you know something? It made me feel great, it fit perfectly, it was a great suit, and that's what you got here. I mean, it's, see, it's hard for people to justify when, Many fine motorcycles are fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. How do you justify it? You justify it because it's what you want and it's built to the standard that you want. And maybe you want some little thing here or something else on the side or whatever it might be. And that's what makes it uh, that's what makes it special and that's what makes it unique. And, and we're also trying to, you know, because we're, you know, a company in California and a motorcycle company and a and a new brand, um, we're starting our third year. What's important to us too is the legacy, right? You know, to, to create something that will last, something that you can pass on. Um, you know, that's really our hope and our and ambition, and it's through what we make, and the people who connect with the machine, and 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 its life, its livingness, it's being ridden, and just to have you know the legacy of the Arch Motorcycle Company. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. Now, how many speed transmission we got here? Six speed. Six speed transmission. Okay. And obviously now for the European standard, you've got to have what, ABS and traction control and all that stuff? You don't need traction generation. control, oh. but you do, do need ABS okay. and there's a different emissions standard and oh, different okay. noise standards and there's some other weird radio frequency stuff. But we're actually working on ABS stuff now and hoping that like by the end of the year that we have a motorcycle that's at least compliant. We might not right. have all the, the paperwork yet, but at least we have a motorcycle we know can meet the standard and we can go through all the testing. And this is carbon fiber here. Correct. Mm, yeah. Delicious BST, <laughs> yeah, carbon nice. fiber. Nicely done, yeah. What yeah, and so we make over 200 of the parts for the machine, uh, the swing arm, side plates, all of the body work, a lot of the elements that are in the Yeah, I've been to the shop. It looks like a hospital for motorcycles. It's nicely <laughs> done. Yeah, I mean, it's nice and clean and, you know, it's just well put together. What does this bike weigh? Uh, about 540 pounds. Okay dry, about yeah. 600 wet. Cool, cool. And it's been fun actually now that we've kind of have the foothold of the KRGT1 to start thinking about new models. Right. Uh, so we're developing something off of the one called the 1S. So we're thinking about maybe tightening the rake here. Right now we have a 30 degree rake. We're yeah. going to go into 24. We're going to chop the bars. We're going to do some new body work, the side plates. We're going to go single sided swing arm, which is being developed on that machine. Um, Anybody ask for crazy stuff, customers? Here's what I want. Well, no, we can't. I'm sorry. No, we don't do that. No. <laughs> um, it's too crazy. No, there's a lot of people who do that really well. Yeah, yeah. And that's just not what we're doing. But they're modifying somebody else's machine. You're yeah. Ma you're making a brand new machine from the yeah. ground up, which is pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah, and cool. it's a, we're also going to try and do some exotics, some like really crazy out of the box ideas and, and all of these kinds of ideas that we have will translate down to the brands that we offer. So take me through the, the process of designing the bike and building the bike. So 
if you can imagine like thinking about starting to design and manufacture over 250 parts for the motorcycle, everything from the kickstand to the gas tanks to the handlebar risers, that everything pretty much starts either on a napkin or a clean sheet of paper, and then it gets more refined and gets turned into a CAD model. Then that CAD model gets turned into a program that the CNC machine cuts, or in other cases like the chassis, a fixture's made. Um, so that happens with every single part. And you can see that actually even for a small company like us to do that in three years is, is pretty aggressive with that number of parts. And then there's testing it, and putting yeah. it together, seeing if it works. I mean, when you think about it, the only thing that's the same between the two motorcycles is the size of the front tire. Yeah. <laughs> was there any point where you got discouraged where you went, oh man, I'm really over my head here. This is, you know what I'm saying? Because there is that, when, when you're building something, there is that excitement and then depression and then you're back and forward. You know, was, was, was it a, t a tough road? I think, you know, I've done this long enough that I don't really, I don't get caught up in that anymore. Right, like right. I'm pretty, the one thing I have more than smarts or anything else is uh, that I just don't quit. So yeah. So I really don't get in that. It's just sort of a fun challenge. And listen, there's a lot worse stuff you could do, yeah? Well, true. true. <laughs> like having a real job. Yeah, oh my right. God, that's awful. I don't think I can get one oh, of those no, anymore. I've had real jobs. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. You, don't want a, you don't want a real job. That's awful. Oh, God, no. It's a horrible thing, a real job. Oh, very cool, very cool. Well, I was fortunate enough to ride this a uh, year and a half ago. Which one did I ride? Um, I don't even know if the one you no, rode is here. Uh, these are some new examples. Can we try some of these? Sure. We brought you a mid control because I, I remember you saying you weren't a fan of the forward I'm control. Not a, I'm not a feet forward. It just seems weird to me to be. Well, we brought forward. you something you might be a little yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, I, I like, see, being somewhat of a motorcycle traditionist, I like just click, click, you know. Okay, well, we have some click, click for you. Well, fantastic. <laughs> see, I would order the click, click. You have the click, click. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Well, let's take it for a ride. Let's see how she goes. Cheers, cool. man. Thank you. You know, just a slight touch on the front brake and a slight touch on the rear brake. And you stop, man, just like that. Just the right amount of pressure. Very nice. As much as I like cafe bikes because they look cool, this is such a comfortable, relaxed riding position. You know, I can do hours and hours like this. It's really nice. You know, California has some of the best motorcycle roads in the country. I mean, we're just, what, seven, eight miles from the shop and we're up here in the hills, no other cars around. Kind of take your time and 
just think till I get to the corner, you know? I like no matter what gear and the torque just pulls you through. You just roll that throttle on a little bit. Pretty stable bike. I like the way you kind of sit in this bike as opposed to sitting on it. And this backrest here, where the seat dips, it gives you a little bit of support. You know, when bikes pull hard like this, you always feel like you're going to slide off the back. I like the way you can just kind of think it around corners, just the slightest bit of pressure. I don't like bikes that are twitzy. A lot of guys like these little cafe bikes where you just, you know, this thing, you kind of find a line and you, you set it and it goes. You know, like a big fast sweeper, you just kind of hold this thing on its track, on its line, and boom. Yano was telling me they just developed these carbon fiber heat shields for the exhaust pipes. And uh, they really work, you know, it's 90 something degrees here today in Los Angeles. And I'm not feeling much engine heat at all. I mean, I can feel it, but it's not intrusive. It's not like, uh, oh, get me off this thing. If I got to describe the bike in one word, it's probably solid, you know, it's really Everything feels extremely tight and well put together. The central backbone here, combined with the gas tank, which is, I guess, structurally part of it. I like the way these big V-twins just kind of thunder along. I mean, years ago, a thousand cc's was a big bike. This is 2,000. The handlebar height is just perfect. It's just exactly right. It's just enough of a riser so you're not putting your weight on it. And when you're at speed, the wind keeps you your hands upright, uh, keeps your body upright, so it takes all the weight off your shoulder, you know. And like I said, you can do this even on a windy road. It's extremely confident. You can kind of lean the bike around just using body English and it just kind of goes where you want it to go. Very nice. Now here's what really impressed me the most, being an old V-twin biker guy. It's 90 something degrees, we put some miles on it, no sweating, no drops of oil coming down the side, <coughs> everything nice and tight, you know? I mean, look at the engine, it looks like we just detailed it. Now, a lot of times with V-twins like this, you get leaking sweating in around here. Really nice. And these carbon fiber uh, heat shields really do a nice job. Yeah, those are uh, prototypes, sir. We just uh, put you the first one. Yeah, because it's really hot today. And I was remarking how cool the bike remains. It's really, really nice. I mean, it's really solid. It's a bit like I've got an old uh, 83 Ducati with that long wheelbase. You put it in the corner and it just stays there. Nice. And that's what I like. It's not twitchy. It's a real mature bike. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, you can ride it. I mean, look, I'm not a racer, obviously, but you can have fun with this without feeling like you're getting... I mean, every time I took my hand off the bars, I didn't get one of these. You right, know? right. But, right. well, you know how common yeah. that is. Yeah. I mean, you, so you can drive sort of light-handed, you know, like... Maybe I could get, use a little less pressure on the clutch. Yeah, that big engine with that torque. And yeah, but other than that, spring in there. nice work, gentlemen. It's really impressive, and again, how hard it is to do this and to make a company and to make an American company. You wonder why there are so few 
motorcycle companies because this is really hard to do. So, congratulations, man. Thanks, thanks, and you got another job, so I don't know how you even do this. <laughs> no, so no, it's good. a passion. The man's no. working two jobs. I love it, though. I know, it's love great. Loving bikes, love great. riding. Check these out. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>